question. This was one of your practice questions from last night. I'm going to give you guys about 15 seconds to read it over. We'll have a quick chat, and then we will try to answer the first part of the question. So when we take a look at cats, we have a royalty fee of $1,250 plus $325 per performance. Who can help me out with an equation that would fit the royalty fee for the musical Cats? And actually, before we have you do that, can you tell me, is this a direct or a partial variation? And how do you know? What do you think, Cam? Awesome job. Excellent explanation as well. Partial variation because there is an upfront cost. So before they actually perform this show, they are going to have to pay something upfront regardless of whether they ever perform the show. Great. So this is going to be a partial variation. And how about the actual equation? Who can help me out? Before we do the equation, Hannah, can you tell me, what's the general form for a partial variation, the equation? Y equals mx plus b. Awesome. Let's talk real quick. Real quick. What is the m value? What is the m value? When I talk about y equals mx plus b, what is this guy right there? What does he represent? Yes, Megan. The constant of variation, nicely done, excellent. And how about B, what does B represent? What does B represent? Yes, the initial cost. The initial cost. Awesome, so another, another way to think of it, M represents the amount it goes up by every person or every show or every kilometer, depending on the scenario, and B is the initial or upfront cost. So how about an equation? I know Hannah wanted to do it before. I've been delaying her. Hannah, what do you think? Um, y equals 325p plus 1250. Nice. Quick little explanation for us. Why 325 here, Hannah? Because uh, that's uh, per performance. Awesome. Awesome. And P, I'm assuming, is per performance. Nicely done. And then our 1250, why is the 1250 there? Where's 1250 come from, Sophia? That's the initial cost that you Awesome, initial cost from before you even perform this show. So you've got to pay that up front. Who's got my second equation for fame? Let's look at fame. Fame, here's our, our royalty fee and our performance fee. What does it look like, folks? Who's got it? How about Graham? Uh, using Y equals mx plus b, I substituted f fame equals uh, 250p plus 1400. Awesome. Can you say that again, your variables that you used? I uh, just used f and p fame for the play because it's different than nice. c, which was cats, and uh, p for number of performances. Perfect. And I believe he said it was 250p for $250 per performance, and then your initial fee you mentioned... 40. 1400 Nicely done. Awesome. <clears throat> now, I like how you used F as an identifier for the equation. Does anyone have maybe a reason why you might use something different than, than F here? I, I get why he did it, and it makes sense. But why might that maybe cause you a problem as you move through the problem? Maybe you're, you get to part C or part D. What do you think? There you go. So F equals the actual cost. So it might be better to use something more like the cost, like C or something along those lines. Over here, I used Y. That's probably not uh, very appropriate. However, it is the Y axis. So it is actually OK to use the same variables for both of these equations because they represent the same thing, right? They represent the performances and they represent the cost. So it might even be best if we went back and we put a C for both of these, just so that we know that that is going to represent our cost. And we have outlined which one is which by kind of separating it with a little chart, okay? But very good. So either way, Graham would be right on the money with his equation. He would not be incorrect. 
but just trying to make sure that things are as easy as possible for you. Okay? Nicely done. So now, when we take a look and we actually graph this thing, where are the graphs going to begin? Are they going to begin at the origin? Or are they going to begin somewhere else? And how do I know? What do you think, Adam? Somewhere else, because they're not starting at zero. They're starting at either 1,250 or 1,400. Awesome. Nicely done. Now, without us actually doing the graph, because we've done quite a few graphs in our course, let's quickly pop back to this page. I'm going to grab each equation, and I'm going to bring it to the next page. And I just want you to help me predict. I just want you to help me predict here which graph which graph is going to start higher up on the grid and which graph is going to start lower on the grid. What do you think? Hey, gentlemen, we okay over here? What do you think? So when we look at the first one, I believe this first one here, this one's cats. And the one at the bottom is fame. So take, take some time to think about that. I don't care about you actually graphing it at this particular moment in, in time, because I know you can do that. But let's make a prediction. Which one is going to start higher up on the y-axis, and which one's going to start lower? We know it's not going to start at the origin. You had already mentioned that, so that's great. It can't start at the origin because it's not direct. What do you think, Megan? Um, I think fame is going to start higher because the initial value is higher. Awesome. So when we focus in on the initial values, folks, right there and right here, fame has a higher initial value, so it makes sense that fame is going to start higher up on the grid and cats will start lower on the grid. Now, mind you, we do not have a scale, and we're not really worried about a scale right now. My next question is this. Which is going to have a steeper line? We know it's going to go up linear because we're dealing with linear equations here. Lots of hands. I like to see that. Lots of hands. Lots of hands. Someone new. How about Anthony? What are you thinking? How come, would fame be steeper? Why do you think fame would be steeper? Well, uh, the royal degree is higher than the cats, and uh, like if you add up the performance plus the feed, it's higher than uh, cats. Oh, I like his logic. Okay, so Anthony's saying he's going, listen, if I look at fame, and if I add... And I'm just going to grab a different color highlighter here. If I add the cost per performance and the initial value, that's higher than adding the cost per performance and initial value of cats. So I could definitely see his logic there. Does anyone have any other suggestions or thoughts? What do you think? How about Hassan? Ah, how many people feel that maybe Hassan, Hassan's is going to be a little steeper? We've got a few hands. A couple more hands are coming up. Okay, I think that would be correct. That's a very good explanation. So I'm glad Anthony brought up this suggestion because that is a common misconception. If we add these two numbers together, that will not affect the steepness. Okay, remember the initial value will tell us where we start on the y-axis, and then our actual constant of variation will tell us how steep. So because this one is more per performance, it's going to rise at a steeper rate than the other, than fame. Okay? So if you want to grab some sort of color, I'm going to do it with, uh, with orange here. I'm just going to highlight cats here in orange, and then I'm going to grab an orange marker, and, or I guess I'll do an orange line. 
And when we deal with, uh, sorry, cats, this one's going to be steeper. And when we deal with fame, this one's going to be less steep. Okay, so very good, very good discussion there, folks. All right, so just by looking at the numbers, we can predict what the graph is going to look like. Keeping in mind, so these are not to scale. All right, nicely done. Okay, let's take a peek at part C. It says, when does the company pay the same royalty fee, fee for, the, for the two productions? What would I have to do to find that information? What would I have to do? What do you think? Megan? You would have to do the graph so then you could find your two points for the number. Awesome. So we aren't going to do that here. I know that you guys can graph, but keeping in mind that that will always occur where they intersect, okay? So we don't have a, a graph to scale, so I don't have that exact value right now, but for the logic, wherever they intersect, that will be when they, when they cost the same amount, okay? Very good. And finally, part D, why do you think the creators of the musical would set royalties in the form of a partial variation instead of a direct variation? We already had this conversation when we talked about the cab, okay, when I was in Toronto a couple weeks ago. We had a little discussion. Why do you think in this case, let's just reiterate that. What do you think, Adam? They can maybe like write the thing, but then decide maybe we're not going to do the play and just that's it. Awesome. So it's kind of like it's kind of like protection in a way. What do you think, Graham? Uh, no matter how many productions they do put on, they're getting a consistent amount of money, like a minimum amount. Awesome. So just like Adam said here, if if they don't follow through, right? If I purchase the music and then maybe it just doesn't come together, at least I'm getting compensated somehow, right? So it's kind of like getting the best of both worlds. You're guaranteed something, but you're also guaranteed that if the show does do very well, that you're going to continue making money as well. Okay, very good job, folks. Any questions about...